Hello again, I'm Jim Raymond with the Colorado State Recovery Task Force. In Colorado, the State Recovery Task Force consists of state departments and agencies that join together after disasters to help move recovery actions forward as rapidly and effectively as possible. An important partner in the recovery effort is the United States Small Business Administration. The SBA is a federal agency that assists and supports the interests of small businesses. In the context of a disaster, the SBA can aid small businesses through their disaster loans. There are several disaster loan programs. However, today we'll just be discussing the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, or EIDL. With us to discuss this program is Francis Padilla. Francis is the District Director for SBA's Colorado District Office, and it's great to have her here. I know that you'll learn a lot from this conversation. Francis, welcome and thanks for your time today. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Jim. I really appreciate the opportunity. Francis, to get started uh, so we can help people guide them through a disaster, can you give us a quick overview of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program? What is the intent of the program? What types of loans does the SBA provide? And who might be eligible? Sure. Um, so as you mentioned, and thank you so much for giving me the introduction and a little bit about SBA, um, we are the only federal agency who whose primary mission it is to help support small businesses to start, grow, expand, and in the event of disasters to recover, as we found during the last eight months became critically important. Um, in general, uh, like from a 30,000 foot level, we provide lots of different kinds of financing assistance through our disaster efforts. And for the, the majority of the time we're providing low interest, low long-term, uh, disaster loans to different kinds of impacted entities. So it could be businesses of all sizes, private nonprofit organizations. Sometimes we do disaster assistance to homeowners and renters, which doesn't seem like it would fit, but um, in physical disasters, we will help them to repair or replace uninsured or underinsured disaster damaged property. Um, we This just gives us a way to a, a, a provide affordable disaster assistance to individuals and to businesses who need it when they're recovering from a declared disaster. Um, and as you mentioned, there's different kinds of them, but they really kind of come in two broad forms, a physical injury or economic injury. And like you said, today we're focusing on, on idols. So idols are basically working capital loans that are made available to small non-farm businesses small agricultural cooperatives um, and small businesses engaged in aquaculture and most private nonprofit entities to help them meet their ordinary and necessary financial obligations that they cannot meet as a direct result of a disaster. So even if the business did not have physical damage, these loans are intended to assist an entity through a disaster recovery period. There's lots of bells and whistles and terms and conditions. So I'm just gonna kind of go through some of these on a broad overview. Um, unlike idle COVID, which we know did exist and does exist now over the last eight months, uh, traditional idle programs do have credit requirements that are a little bit different from idle COVID. Um, applicants absolutely have to have a credit history that would be acceptable to SBA. Uh, they have to show the ability to repay the loan. Um, unlike COVID idle, just regular traditional idle also requires collateral for all idle loans that are over $25,000. So normally what we'll do is we'll take real estate as collateral if it's available, but we won't decline a loan solely for um, a lack of collateral. We'll just ask that a client pledge whatever is available. Um, the interest rate is a little bit different from uh COVID idle as well, it's really determined by a formula that's set by law, and then it's set and fixed for the life of that loan at that time. And it really depends, the interest rate that's finally offered is um, really depends on the individual. So you could have different criteria, for instance, whether you're a nonprofit or for-profit, there would be a different interest rate. And whether or not you have credit elsewhere, there might be a different interest rate. So like in the case of the Grizzly Fire idle declaration, 
Um, the interest rates were set for disaster loans that occurred after July 31st. And so you could have an interest rate of either 3% or 6%, depending on your credit elsewhere. Or if you were a nonprofit, it would be 2.75. But it does work like that. And, you know, most disaster loans are really offered at the lower of the interest rates anyway. Uh, the loan terms are up to 30 years. And it re again, it depends on the individual applicant. We're going to determine an appropriate maturity date based on the financial condition of each one of the borrowers. Um, so like I said, up to 30 years. Sometimes if you meet, can meet the obligation in 15, you might get that as the loan term. And at that point, it becomes a negotiation with the loan officer. The loan limit for any of our EIDL loans is up to 2 million. Um, but again, it's determined by the condition and the necessity and the need of that individual borrower. And of course, on the ability to repay. But what we normally offer the client is the amount that they need to get through what we call a recovery period. So that's up to 2 million. Uh, again, working capital and normal expenses are, are, are the expectations for the use of proceeds. Some examples might be if a business or a nonprofit needs to continue healthcare benefits. Uh, they need to pay rent over that disaster recovery period. They need to use the money on utilities or fix debt payments. Those would be the kinds of things that would be eligible uses of proceeds. And then we require borrowers under regular and traditional idle to obtain and maintain appropriate insurance. Well, Colorado has had a number of disasters of late. And whenever we have a disaster and we recognize that there will be economic injury to businesses, how does the program get activated? What is the process to get a declaration in Colorado after a disaster? You know, um, if we're going to ask to activate EIDL, there's kind of a bunch of different processes. We'll kind of cover the two most common, but I do want you to know that there are other methods to get to an EIDL disaster declaration. Uh, we have a military reservist declaration, so that happens when somebody is deployed and there might be economic injury because the business is left. That's one avenue. Um, uh, there can be a Secretary of Commerce declaration, and SBA would, in essence, piggyback on that declaration and offer EIDL as a result of that. The two most common in Colorado that I've seen have been a Secretary of Agriculture declaration, and that's when the Secretary of Ag um, designates an agricultural disaster, and then we activate our EIDL program for the specified primary and contiguous counties. And it doesn't take any um, activation on the part of the state or anyone locally that happens at the national level. And then we would offer those loans and try to communicate that statewide to all the impacted counties. But the one that we actually work together on, Jim, and where we really appreciate the help of the local emergency managers is um, through the process called the governor certification. So this is when a governor certifies that there are at least five small businesses and or otherwise eligible applicants that are in a disaster area and they've suffered some kind of substantial economic injury as a result of this disaster and they prove or show that they need financial assistance and that it's not available elsewhere on reasonable rates and terms. So this is not necessarily an application, it's an expression of an intent. So what happens normally is we ask local emergency managers, and it can be local emergency managers in combination with local economic development organizations, chambers of commerce, our SBDC network and other partners to go out into the community and gather at least five eligible worksheets. So these are small businesses, again, eligible nonprofits, et cetera, that would fill out a worksheet. Those worksheets would be submitted to SBA in advance, and they can be, to be vetted because we're going to want to end up with five worksheets from every primary county where we say we want um, a declaration uh, listed. Um, so the, the nice thing about um, choosing your primary counties wisely is if you can get five from that primary county, all the other contiguous counties, so that's any other county that touches the border of that county, will also get included in the declaration. So we always try to shoot from for five worksheets 
that are eligible and vetted from each primary county. So those worksheets are sent to SBA, they're vetted, and then they become a part of a governor certification package. So the governor certification package will include a request letter that outlines, here's what happened, here are the date of the occurrences, here are the five worksheets that have already been vetted, here are the counties um, that we want designated, the primary, and then of course contiguous counties would be included in that. And then that sent up to SBA. Um, in Colorado, we are part of the field of West SBA operations. So they'll look at this package, they'll vet it all, and then there will be communication back and forth from the, your office, the state recovery office, with the governor certification letter. They'll look at all the worksheets, do the analysis, and then make a determination that there would be actually an SBA declaration. So this is notwithstanding that there would be FEMA or anybody else involved, just an SBA agency declaration for EIDL. Um, and once they declare that this is appropriate, they'll make a recommendation to the SBA administrator. The SBA administrator is cabinet level under the president's cabinet. Um, and they would make the, the determination that yes, they're going to approve and declare. Then um, all the information would be sent back down to the state, back down to the local district office. There would be a declaration that's put in place and then a press release and all of the collateral documents would be sent out. So how long do most de declarations last? How long are loans available to applicants following a declaration? I think it's a pretty long time. For EIDL, we actually do give it quite amount of time. We give it nine months from the date of the declaration of the disaster. And the point of that is, is you don't automatically experience an economic injury just because mm -hmm. something might happen in that area. It may take a while for there to be an impact effect. So we try to keep that application window open, you know, for as long as statutorily possible. And for EIDL, that's usually nine months. So can a business apply for different loans under different disaster declarations? Like yeah. one for a fire and one for COVID, for example? They absolutely can. And they can, if, if there was even a physical injury, they could also combine those. Mm. Um, the maximum in disaster assistance to any one borrower would be up to 2 million. And that just, you can combine different kinds of sources, um, but it would still be based on that individual strength of application, their ability to pay, their financial need. Um, in cases of COVID and then let's say any other idol that are declared in Colorado, I think the key to accessing the funds is that you've got to tie a specific economic injury to that specific disaster. So we know small businesses across Colorado were absolutely impacted by COVID. But then, you know, in the Glenwood Springs area, all of a sudden we got the Grizzly Creek fire. So if a business wanted to do both, if they've already done their COVID their COVID idol, they would come back and say, okay, now this fire happened. And as a result of this fire, for instance, we didn't have the ability to have I-70 opened. And so without I-70 traffic, we didn't have, you know, the tourists or people staying in our hotel or eating at our restaurant. And that was a direct result of I-70 being closed. And that would be a way to access both. Well, that's been a tremendous amount of information. And there's certainly a lot of different things that people can learn from the Small Business Administration. Where can people go to get more information on EIDL and to learn about the current Colorado declarations that are in place today? So I think the best resource is really our website. We have an amazing website. It takes a few clicks, but I think once you're in there, you're gonna find all the information you could ever possibly need about SBA disaster. The easiest way to do it is to go to sba.gov backslash disaster. Right now, because we do have the pandemic going, there is a banner head that takes you to just the COVID resources. But if you scroll mm -hmm. all the way down, you'll find the traditional sources. So for physical injury, economic injury, you'll also find a disaster recovery hub that has a lot of really great information for those of you that are trying to reconstitute, to try to rebuild ideas for resiliency going forward, disaster preparedness. Um, the other thing that you can do is just come straight to your SBA district office like mine. So we serve the entire state of Colorado and you can find us at sba.gov backslash Colorado and we can help you navigate through all the different programs, not just disaster, but also connect you to the resource partners that exist throughout Colorado. We have 15 small business development centers that we fund. We have a woman's business center. We have two score chapters. Um, we also have veteran business outreach centers. So there is no lack of technical assistance. In fact, we joke that we're tripping over each other to help small businesses. 
Francis, thank you so much for your time today and the work you're doing and everyone at SBA is doing to support communities across Colorado. Thank you very much. And thanks to you, the emergency managers and everyone engaged in recovery across Colorado to keep Colorado moving forward. You can view additional videos on other recovery topics on our YouTube channel, CO Emergency Colorado. Thank you and be well.